Hello and welcome back to the channel for the final part of my preview for Doctor Who Flux episode 2 or chapter 2 War of the Sontarans which at the time of recording is barely 24 hours away and at the time of release it's today. So yeah this is going to be some very last minute uh, thoughts and predictions and stuff basically as I did last week for the Halloween apocalypse. A sort of culmination of the videos I've done so far earlier this week, a synopsis analysis and a cast list analysis for this episode. Please do go and check out those if you haven't already. I'm going to be bringing everything that I said in those videos to a head and combining it with all the promo pics released so far and all the trailer footage and just giving you my general prediction of what's going to happen in this episode and in what order roughly based on the information we've got so far. So I guess the sensible place to begin is the end of last week's episode in the cliffhanger and how we expect that to be resolved. So there is one promo pic that gives a bit of insight to this, not much, but a little bit. It's got the Doctor in the foreground, Dan behind her, and the Doctor sort of reaching out to what looks like one of the TARDIS columns, the ones that everybody sort of made fun of back in Series 11, the ones that sort of you know lean over the, the console. And it sort of looks like one of those, but as if it's been like tree stumped, you know, as if it's been snapped in half and this is what's left of it. And it's got all that sort of black stuff leaking out that we saw in the Halloween apocalypse. So if the TARDIS is, is looking more damaged than it was in last week's episode in this photo, I'm basically predicting that, okay, the Doctor's going to get out of this cliffhanger by sacrificing the TARDIS, perhaps, or at least the TARDIS is going to sustain some sort of damage, you know, however the Doctor ends up getting out of it. Uh, as we saw last week, you know, the Flux was sort of invading the TARDIS and pouring into it. So I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it's been suggested by some people that the Doctor's going to do like a last minute dematerialization and sort of end up on the Crimean War battleground that way by sort of going back in time to sort of combat the Flux in that way because the, the Flux has reached the present, maybe to go back in time into history. It's not going to have got there yet, perhaps. It's been suggested also that the Hads could make another appearance. The Hostile something or other displacement system, I think that's what it stands for, uh, introduced back in the second Doctor era, I believe, maybe in the Crotons, but don't quote me on that. And uh, obviously it made a, a reappearance in the Revived era, coming close to sort of 10 years ago now, gosh, in Cold War. Yeah, basically that's how the TARDIS was able to survive when it was literally being, being flooded by water in that case. And, you know, obviously we've got a similar sort of thing going on here with the Flux flooding the TARDIS, I guess, in a manner of speaking. So, yeah, I think it's pretty likely. But whatever the case, we do know that the TARDIS somehow survives in some form because we've seen the exterior on the Crimean War battlefield. So we know it does survive. We know it gets the Doctor and co to this historical location and that they all survive as well and that they're all still together at the start of the episode at least because from what we've got here it looks like at some point the Doctor is going to get separated from Yaz and Dan and possibly Yaz and Dan are going to get separated from each other as well possibly we're going to have sort of three strands going on in this story but not straight away, not to begin with, because we have got these photos of the three of them together meeting Mary Seacole, possibly, you know, before the titles, you know, as part of the pre-titles sequence of the meeting Mary Seacole. And by the looks of it, they're then going to end up in Mary Seacole's sort of hospital or boarding house that she set up for wounded soldiers, the, the thing that she's most famous for. We saw that sort of huts building erected in filming photos on location you know, this time last year, basically, when this episode was being shot. And we've also got images and footage and stuff of the Doctor inside that space with Mary Seacole and also with General Logan, Gerald Kidd's character. So presumably that's where the Doctor's going to come face to face with him for the first time. And then very shortly after that, it would seem, the Sontarans are actually going to show up, the, the villains of the piece. We've got this footage in the trailer of sort of three ships crashing down to Earth, to the battlefield, with the Doctor in foreground alongside Mary Seacole and General Logan. Interestingly, you know, from this point on, Yaz and Dan are nowhere to be seen in any of the Crimean War photos or footage which leads me to believe that they're going to get split up from the Doctor fairly early on, possibly even before the Sontarans appear. What we've basically got, from what I can gather, is a sort of confrontation between the Doctor and the sort of lead Sontaran. I'm guessing this is the other Sontaran played by Jonathan Watson, so not the one we saw last week, but one that looks very similar to him and another sort of Sontaran commander. I think in the cast list he was listed as Skark or something along those lines. 
So he's going to appear, possibly on the horse, or possibly that comes later on in the episode, not 100% clear. But to start with at least, it would seem that there is just one Sontaran making contact with the humans representing the Sontaran race. Presumably the rest of them, the troopers, just stay in the ships for the time being. And this Sontaran has a sort of very dramatic confrontation with the Doctor. Uh, we've got this very cool shot of the two of them separated by massive distance, you know, social distancing in action, I suppose, uh, to an extreme scale, with the Doctor on the left-hand side, Sontaran on the right-hand side, and loads of space in between them. And then we also have close-ups of the two of them that match this, that would appear to be from the same scene. Now, as lots of people quite rightly noted, there are two variations of that wide shot. So in the next time trailer, there's one. In the TV trailer, there's one that's slightly different, basically just the same setup, but with General Logan having now replaced the Doctor on the left-hand side. And if you look very carefully, you can see her with her hands up or whatever, sort of surrendering, being taken away by a soldier behind him further to the left of frame. So I'm predicting that what happens here is that the Doctor makes first contact with the Sontaran, she gets ahead of the game, you know, gets there first before Logan, before the British Army soldiers, and then General Logan turns up and forces her to surrender and to get out of the way. He takes charge, and then that's where the line about the Sontaran sort of accepting an offer of a massacre or whatever comes into things. Presumably Logan makes this offer, an offer which, uh, yeah, I think will probably come back to haunt him a bit later in the episode by the looks of things. Because, yeah, basically all the remaining footage of the Crimean War scenes shows the British army fighting the Sontarans, and presumably that's not going to end too well for them. But actually, sneaky little segue here, it's not just going to be a Sontaran episode, despite what the title may have you believe. So I mentioned earlier in my educated guess that the Doctor is going to get separated from Yaz and Dan at some point early on in this story, and that is basically based on other promo pics and footage of the two of them in very different locations to the Doctor and doing very different things. So let's talk about Dan first of all who, by the looks of it, is going to end up back in present-day Liverpool somehow. We've got footage of him on his street, a sort of reaction shot way back from the, the very first teaser trailer, which pairs up pretty nicely with a more recently released shot of him running away from a load of Sontarans on his street that are sort of marching towards him or running towards him. And right in the top of frame there, we've got a Sontaran ship over that stadium. Oh gosh, is it called Anfield or something? I'm not a massive expert on football. The stadium which was in the Halloween apocalypse, which the TARDIS landed in front of and, and the Doctor made some remark about. Clearly the Sontarans have set up a base of operations there. I mean, it does beg the question, how long have the Sontarans been there by the time that Dan arrives back home? It has been suggested by some people that perhaps, you know, the Sontarans have sort of already won by this point. Perhaps even they've won in the Crimean War, you know, historical setting, perhaps creating some alternate future reality or whatever, because obviously in the previous episode, Liverpool wasn't invaded by Sontarans. But yeah, maybe they've rewritten history and become the rulers of Earth, and that's what we're seeing here. And that would seem to corroborate a shot of loads of Sontaran ships in a sort of dock space, whatever, that was seen in the full trailer a few weeks back. Lots of people speculated at the time that this perhaps could be a sort of alternate reality Liverpool that's been taken over by the Sontarans, and maybe they're right, because that would seem to line up with this sort of line of thinking, I guess. But what else have we got to look forward to in terms of Dan in this story? Well, we're going to meet his parents at some point, presumably when he arrives back in present-day Liverpool. We're going to see him get his wok at long last and use that to bash a Sontaran or two over the head, as seen in filming this time last year. And also the Wok has made various appearances in promo pics more recently, including the sort of main character art for Dan, which uh, <laughs> is a bit weird, but people seem to love it, so why not? And also that shot of him sort of falling down a tunnel or something, it's not entirely clear, but that shot that first appeared in the very first teaser trailer is also going to appear somewhere in this episode, it's going to fit into things somehow. I don't know, maybe it's part of a Sontaran ship and he's sort of going down the chute or something to investigate and to try and uh, infiltrate one of their ships or something like that. And then finally, the final strand to all this, it would seem, is a subplot involving Yaz and also Vinda. It's not clear which of them arrives in this space first, but basically both of them find themselves in what would appear to be the Temple of Atropos, as mentioned in the episode synopsis. 
And then at some point subsequent to that, Swarm and Azure are also going to end up in that space along with this mysterious new character, Passenger, played by Johnny Mathers, not Mathers, apologies, I mispronounced that in my previous video about the cast list. Yeah, he's going to rock up there alongside those two and clearly whatever the three of them have planned is not going to be good and is going to tie into the overall series arc in some way because all three of them are set to return in the following episode and possibly later into the series as well. So that's all very exciting but obviously we know very little about it all at this stage. I will make one final prediction regarding Vinda. Now clearly he meets Yaz in this episode whether he's going to meet Dan and the Doctor in this episode as well is not entirely clear. I guess it's possible that he could get whisked away in the TARDIS at the end of this episode and maybe that's the point at which he sort of becomes part of the team so to speak because he is listed in the synopsis for episode 3 alongside the Doctor and Yaz and Dan. He does look set to be a sort of main character in that instalment. So yeah, I'm guessing the cliffhanger involves him sort of joining the Doctor in the TARDIS and the four of them landing wherever it is that the next episode is set or sort of finding themselves in that location. I guess one final thing to mention before I end the video is, you know, are the Sontarans going to be entirely defeated by the end of this instalment? Or are they going to be left at large somewhat and appear later in the series? I think there are one or two things so far in interviews and stuff that have suggested that that is perhaps what's going to happen. You know, they are going to appear again. So I guess I'm sort of expecting the Crimean War thing to be resolved within this episode, obviously. But also for the Sontarans to get away, for them to escape and reappear at some point later in the series. But that's what I think. What do you think is going to happen in War of the Sontarans, the second instalment of Doctor Who Flux? Do you agree with any of my predictions? Do you think there's anything I've sort of got a bit wrong here? Or whatever the case, let me know your theories and predictions and guesses in the comments below. I'm very much looking forward to reading them. Please do like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new to the channel for more Doctor Who Flux content over the coming days and weeks. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the episode tonight, assuming you're watching this the day it goes out. And yeah, goodbye for now, guys.